يقول الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي واللهم بلغنا رمضان واللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا إله إلا الله واللهم اجعلنا من الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمين يا رب العالمين In today's khutbah, I'd like to share with you a little history of this incredible month that we are all hopeful of witnessing. I want to start by praying to Allah Azza wa Jal that Allah allows all of us to benefit as much as we possibly can from this coming month and that He makes it a means for our continued guidance, our forgiveness. It is a, a means by which our hearts are softened, not just towards Allah, but also towards one another. What I wanted to share with you is actually something from the surah, that the only surah that actually talks about Ramadan, Surah Al-Baqarah. And where this ayah is mentioned, or the ayat about Ramadan are mentioned, are actually a progression that was mentioned something much, much, much before then. This discussion actually begins with Adam alayhi salam himself. Adam alayhi salam, this incredible creature that Allah made, that He even commanded the angels because of His creation to make sajda, this incredible creation was given Jannah, the place that we eventually want to go back home. And which is, this is important to know because about Jannah, Allah describes believers as warithun. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْوَارِثُونَ الَّذِينَ يَرِثُونَ الْفِرْدَوْسَ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ That people that will go back to heaven are actually gaining heaven or Jannah as inheritance. Inheritance means your ancestors owned it. That's what that means. And that was, a, that was the home given to our father, Adam alayhi salam. And that's where humanity began, and which is why when we go back to Jannah, we're actually warithun. We're actually inheriting what was already meant, to, meant for us. You know, there are some treasures, some, some monies in life that you have to earn by the work of your hand. And there are some that are yours because the family passed it down to you. You know, there's a property that was passed down, money that was passed down, a car that was passed down, and it's yours. Or jewelry that was passed down. Jannah is a, is a bit of both. It is meant for us because it's for, it was given to our father and we cannot get it without work. It's kind of both things at the same time. But in any case, Allah Azza wa Jal gave this amazing gift to Adam alayhi salam and used to speak to Adam alayhi salam directly. He gave him advice directly, he gave, told him to eat freely, you know, and you know, could, uh, he told our mother and our father, both of them, that they can have whatever they want in this Jannah. You all know the story except for this one tree. You know, and when he gave all of this advice, one thing that I want to, your attention on is that Allah Azza wa addressed Adam alayhi salam directly. Uskun anta wa al Jannah. He talked to them directly. And you can imagine Jannah, what Allah Himself describes, is inda sidratil muntaha. It's inda al Jannatul ma'wa. Jannah is very high up. Like the earth is, this worldly life is called dunya. Dunya in Arabic comes from the word adna. It's the feminine form of low. And it actually means the lowest possible life you can have. You can only get higher from here. And the higher is actually Jannah. It's the highest. It's right under the arsh of Allah in one ayah and described in Surah Al-Najm. It's right in that proximity. So what I'm trying to get at is known, not only is Adam alayhi salam speaking with Allah and Allah is speaking with him, he's very close to Allah. The, one of the great marvels of Jannah isn't just the trees and the food and the, but, but actually the closeness to Allah Himself subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a remarkable gift of Jannah. And yet, Adam alayhi salam made a fatal mistake. The waswasa of shaitan was successful. His whisper was successful. And the mistake took place. And a lot of people misunderstand and think that as a result, Adam alayhi salam was punished. And the punishment was that he will be sent all the way down to this planet, Earth. That's how life here began for human beings. Adam salam was sent here as a punishment. When you study the Surah and the Qur'an carefully, you discover that actually Adam salam was not sent here as a punishment. That's actually a common Christian view. That you know, this life is a curse and man was, is paying for the original sin and all of that. We're not, we actually believe, كُلُّ مَوْلُودٍ يُولَدُ عَلَى الْفِطْرَةِ Every human being is born on a predisposed goodness. And as a matter of fact, even describing this earth within the context of the story of Adam, Allah Azza wa says about this life on this earth, He says, وَجَعَلْنَا لَكُمْ فِيهَا مَعَايِشْ قَلِيلًا مَا تَشْكُرُونَ He put a lot of things here for you to make sure you can live really well. 
you're so, so little that you're grateful. Like, Allah didn't describe this earth as a punishment, He described this earth as something marvelous and beautiful. As a matter of fact, the more you study Qur'an, the more you appreciate the creation around you. He'll describe the beauty of, with which He you know, made a camel, or the mountain, or the sky, or the tree, or the food that you eat, or even the wrappings of the food. In other words, Allah did not make this world ugly, He made this world beautiful. And he made this world a means of sustenance for us so that we could become grateful. In many places in the Qur'an you'll learn that a lot of the gifts of this world, one of their purposes is to remind you if this is so beautiful, I imagine what the original home was like. Like it's supposed to remind you of the original meaning Jannah, it's a preview. Even though Jannah is beyond our imagination, but there are some things in common, isn't it? Allah will talk about trees in Jannah. How would you and I know what a tree is if we, Allah didn't give us trees in this earth? He'll talk about rivers, he'll talk about milk, he'll talk about honey, he'll talk about you know, the flesh of birds, you know, he'll talk about these things. You would never appreciate those things if you didn't have some taste of it here. So it's because he made this Jannah in a se this world, he made it in a sense a preview of what is coming next. But regardless, let me get back to my point. The point is Adam السلام, used to be very close to Allah. And now, as a result of that slip-up, Allah is sending him down to the earth. Again, you and I know it's not a punishment. But it feels like it. Because you just left Jannah, and you've been brought down here. And Jannah is Jannatul Khuld. You don't get old, you don't get sick, you have nothing to fear, you have no sadness. When you come down here, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَرْ Human beings are going to be you know, drowning in toil, in labor. They're going to be hungry, they're going to be sick, they're going to get weak, they're going to have to work, they can't just be fed without any problem. They, you know, this world is just full of problems. That's what it comes with. As beautiful as it is, it's not easy. Every one of us has struggles in life. And so Allah Azza wa Jal put us on this earth, and it, one of the worst things about it that you can imagine Adam alayhi salam feels, is that he used to be so close to Allah, and now he's so, so, so far from Allah. He was so highly ranked and you know, dignified that even the angels were commanded to do sajda. And now he's being sent down. And by the way, in the ayah in which he's been sent down, ibitu minha jami'an, it's him, our mother, Hawa, and Iblis. All of them are being sent down. Meaning now I have to share this place. I used to be above the rank of angels and now I have to share this place even with Iblis and his lineage. This is what I've been brought down to. It's humiliating. That's, it's, a, it's a humiliation and he feels very distanced from Allah Azza wa Jal. And but as Allah was sending him down, Allah gave him an opportunity and reminded him, by the way, there will be a way that you and your children and their children and their children will be able to make their way back up. You've been sent down, but you'll have a way to come back up. And so he says to him, فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدًا فَمَنْ تَبِعَ هُدَايَ فَلَا خُفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْسَنُونَ Come down from here, meaning descend from heaven, come down on this earth, on this planet. But he says, if and when guidance comes to you, any guidance comes to you from me. To, and that means the plural, not just Adam, to guidance to Adam, but to his children. At any point in history, when I decide to send you guidance, whoever decides to follow my guidance, there's not going to be any fear for them, they're not going to be scared of anything. And that's not just a reference to what's going to happen in this life, actually لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحسنون in its truest sense. To have no fear left and to have no sadness left is actually one of the greatest gifts of Jannah itself. It is as though Allah is telling him, follow this guidance and watch, you can come and get upgraded once again. You can elevate once back again to the original home. That was the promise made to Adam alayhi salam. Fine. History goes through, centuries pass, millennia pass, prophets after prophets after prophets, each one of them fulfilling little by little the promise that was made to Adam, guidance will come, if you follow it, then there's not going to be any fear or sadness for those who follow it. That promise kept getting fulfilled, and some, just some of those prophets, Allah mentions in the Qur'an, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ لَمْ نَقْصُصْ عَلَيْكَ نَقْصُصْهُمْ عَلَيْكَ There are among them who we didn't even tell you about, there are so many more prophets that we don't even know about. So this promise of Allah, of guidance coming, kept being fulfilled until that finest, the, the, the promise reaches its climax. The last time that that promise was fulfilled was when Allah decided to send His final message to all of us, to His final messenger because there's no more messengers coming, and that is Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and that is the Qur'an. One of the things about the Qur'an, it's really beautiful, 
The Prophet himself would describe it as وَهُوَ حَبْلُ اللَّهِ الْمَتِينِ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ It is an extended rope of Allah from the sky to the earth. The Qur'an is a rope of Allah from the sky to the earth. The Qur'an will say وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا Hold on to Allah's rope altogether. And Allah's rope, as many of the companions commented, is actually the Qur'an. Hold on to the Qur'an. I told you before, we've been sent down, there has to be a way that we can go back up. And now we're learning that a rope was given. And this rope, لَنْفِصَامَ laha. It cannot crack like a chain, that link would be broken. It will not snap, it will remain. And it will remain extended until humanity comes to an end. Generations will come and go, but this rope of Allah, that final rope of Allah that has been given will never be cut once again. The, the, the teachings that were given, the guidance that was given to Musa alayhi salam, to Salih alayhi salam, to Shu'ayb alayhi salam, to, pre, to Nuh alayhi salam, those guidances that they were given, a time came where people forgot them and they were lost. Or people changed them and they couldn't find the truth anymore. But now Allah gave this guidance that will forever remain a means by which people can make their way back to Allah again. And that is the word of Allah, that is the Qur'an. And that Qur'an, meaning that final episode of the promise of Allah, given to Adam alayhi salam in the beginning of Baqarah, that promise of Allah reaches its climax when Allah says, شَهْرُ Ramadan, الَّذِي unzila fihi al-Qur'an. The month of Ramadan is the one in which the Qur'an was sent down. This is the ultimate gift of Allah to all of humanity so they can make their way back to the home that was meant for them because it was given as a gift to their father. So we can make it back all the way to the closeness of Allah again. This is actually as just an introductory, just a notion. What is it that we're celebrating? We're celebrating the fulfillment of Allah's promise. For the, the promise of hope. And understand, there are, there are people sitting in this audience and people that might watch this recording that felt like at some point they were close to Allah. That some feel like, I used to be a good person. Or there was a time where I was kind of much better than where I am. And you fell, you slipped. And you slipped really far. And you feel like you're so far away from Allah now. There's no hope for you. You've been listening to shaitan, and you are now just lost, gone. And it is, I can tell you, as far as you think you and I are from Allah, I don't think we can compare to someone who used to be in Jannah and was put down, demoted into the earth. That's a pretty low, that's a, that's a pretty serious demotion, you know? To someone who was so close to Allah that Allah would speak to him directly. And then Allah says to him, no, 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 no more will I speak to you directly, now I will speak to you through revelation. He's that distance, and even he has hope. He has hope in what revelation will come, and it will reconnect me to my Rabb. The Qur'an is not there to condemn you to hell. The Qur'an is not there to let you know that you have no hope. The Qur'an is Allah's promise that you and I, no matter what mistakes we've made, no matter how far we've fallen, no matter how lost we feel we are, we are going to be like our father, we are not going to be like Iblis. Iblis, and ablasa as a verb even in the Arabic language, it means to lose hope. One of the meanings of Iblis is to lose hope. We will not become hopeless. We are going to maintain Hope first and foremost in ourselves, when you start telling yourself, you're a lost cause. I'm just a bad person, what can I do? When you start saying that about yourself, then you have actually followed the sunnah of Iblis. He's accepted about himself that he's evil. But human beings have been given the opportunity, you will make mistakes. كُلُّ بَنِي آدَمْ خَطَّاؤُونَ all children of Adam are going to make mistakes repeatedly. Khata'un actually is different from khati'un even. The Prophet ﷺ says they'll keep making mistakes. It's not even that you make a mistake once, you're like addicted to making mistakes. I'm addicted to making mistakes. And yet, those who keep on making mistakes, the best of them are the ones who keep coming back to Allah, and keep coming back to Allah, and keep coming back to Allah. This is the month that was given. This month is celebrating that opportunity to come back to Allah, because this is when Allah threw, threw His rope down his Qur'an down, his words down, that can keep us always and always connected to him. You know when you really miss someone, you want to call them. You want to hear their voice. If somebody's passed away and you miss them, what do you do? You play a recording of them. And you just, you know, watch this child laugh, or this parent talk to you, or whatever. When people reminisce or want to connect with someone, it's necessary that they feel like they're engaged in conversation with them. 
When we feel far away from Allah, we need to be in conversation with Him. We want to hear His words, and that's what Allah gave us, His words. That's what He gave us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the month, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. It's something so, so beautiful that Allah Azza wa gave to us that He, and the one who caused Adam alayhi salam to slip, He chains him up in this month. He puts him on the side, so you will not be distracted again. You, there will be nothing between you and Allah's word. You will be connected to it, subhanAllah. And so as I conclude this khutbah, I want to share with you one of the gifts of this month. There are several mentioned in the ayat of Ramadan. I just want to leave you with one that I really hope that you and I can take full advantage of. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ When my slave asks you about me, then certainly I am near. Allah did not say if my slave asks, He says when my slave asks, because He expects that absolutely it will happen. He's optimistic about you. You may not be optimistic about yourself, Allah is optimistic about you. He tells His Prophet wasallam, when they ask you about me, our expectation was that the, Allah would tell him, when they ask you, you tell them that I'm close. But no, when they ask you, Allah stops talking to His Messenger and talks to you and me directly and says, I am close for sure. Halfway through that ayah, the conversation is no longer with the Messenger of Allah وسلم, The conversation is between you and Allah directly. You haven't talked to Allah in a long time. You feel like when you, do, you don't talk to someone, you feel like they don't want to talk to you. Where were you all this time? You want to go through somebody else. Is he still mad at me? You know, you don't want to deal with them directly. But Allah Azza wa Jal breaks that wall. He comes to you directly and says, I am most certainly near. فَإِنِّي قريب. And then you feel like you've been so far away. Why would he answer my prayers? And he says, Ujibu دَعْوَةَ الدَّعْ I immediately respond to the single dua of the one who makes dua. The single prayer, the single request, the single call of the one who made the call. In other words, in this beautiful ayah, Allah isn't even talking about the one who makes hours and hours of dua. He's talking about someone who turned to Allah just one time. Even one time. Allah doesn't say, oh, okay. All this time you party, and now you need something and you come to me for dua. Get lost. No, 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 no. I will immediately respond even to that person. At that one time that they made the dua. And what are his qualifications? You know, we feel like if you're going to be able to address someone important, you should have prerequisites. It is always the case. And even spiritually speaking, people might you know, feel, well, if you're going to make dua to Allah, then you better be dressed properly. You better be in the masjid. It's the best place to make dua is the haram or the Kaaba or al masjid al nabawi Or you have better, you know, have stopped sinning and then you should make dua, etc. And all of those things are true. But in this ayah of hope, Allah says, the only qualification I need from you is that you're ready to make the dua. That's it. You could be in the lowest, in the pits of darkness, just turn back to Allah, nobody else. You're not doing this to show anybody else how religious you are, or to impress anybody else, or you're not concerned about the judgment of anybody else. People around you and me will think much, they either think much better than who we are, or much worse than who we are. People around you think you're a really good person, and you know what you are. Or people around you think you're a horrible human being. Yet yeah, there's no goodness in you. And neither of them know. Allah knows, Allah knows, and you know. You don't let the judgment of people fool you. You don't let you, yourself do that. You don't even know where you stand, only Allah truly knows. So you leave all of those judgments behind. Doesn't matter what people say about you, good or bad, it doesn't matter what they say about you. You just turn to Allah and you ask Him. You forgot about the noise, all the other noise. And whenever you make that dua, إِذَا دَعَانَ I will respond to the one who makes the call. I, and I will, Allah says, respond immediately whenever he makes the call. This is in the context of this, the month of Ramadan, especially in the month of Ramadan, because Allah has extended his rope, call on Allah. Ask Allah for things. Speak with Allah. Speak with Allah when you're alone. Speak with Allah when you're in the car. You don't have to speak to Allah in Arabic, it's okay. You can speak to him in Punjabi, it's fine. You can speak to him in Bangla. You can speak to him in English, it's, it's completely fine. You, can speak to, you don't have to speak to him in Fusha, you can speak to him in Ammiya, it's cool. Allah Azza wa taught all languages. If you don't know the language of, of the, the scripture, it's fine. You, but but the, the thing Allah wants from you is to connect to him directly, first and foremost. To speak with him, to call on him. To call on him. How many people actually call on Allah? Talk to Allah. 
Beg before Allah, cry before Allah. The more you will talk to him, you know, we, we, we feel awkward. Somebody might see me talking to, talking to myself in the car. You know, maybe I've got a psychological problem. You know, this is what's called Iman Bil Ghaib. You truly believe in the end. If you feel awkward, then you feel like he's not really listening. If you truly believe that he's listening, talk to him. Who cares about what anybody else thinks? That's just between you and him. And so he makes a request of you. He gave you an offer. I will answer your prayers when you call. Whenever you call, I will answer. But on the flip side of it, he made a request from you. He says, فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا Then at the very least, they should at least try to respond to me. You're talking to Allah, and Allah says, I'll respond to you. But now Allah says, you should respond to me too. Or at least try to respond to me too. He didn't say respond, because that would mean you have to be perfect. He said, try to respond, istijaba. At least show me the desire to respond. But if you want to respond to someone, you have to hear them first. It's impossible to respond to somebody unless you listen to them. If there was no request made, there's no response. If there's no questions asked, there's no response. So the fact that Allah is asking for a response means He's asking you to listen to Him first. But how do you listen to Allah? Oh wait, that's what the word of Allah is. When you're reciting the word of Allah, when you're listening to the word of Allah, when you're thinking about the word of Allah, you're listening to things that require a response. That's Allah talking to you. So He says, it's time. You're speaking to me, let me speak to you too. You want me to respond, why don't you try and respond to me too? This is telling us that the Qur'an at its core is actually a conversation between the slave and the master. Dua is when we speak to Allah, Qur'an is when Allah speaks to us. So beautiful. Yeah, that's, what a, that's how a conversation becomes complete, isn't it? It can't just be one way. It has to be both ways. We have to listen to Allah, and then Allah will listen to us also. Well, yu'minu bi and continue to believe in me. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ So they may be set straight. We are now learning the essential ingredients for how to fix our life. How, to fi how do I fix my life? How do you fix your life? It's actually to truly be in conversation with Allah. I will speak with Him and He will speak with me. I will speak with Him with my dua, with my request, with my supplication, with my confessions to Him, with my admissions to Him about where I stand, what I need, what my mistakes are, how sorry I am. What I, you know, what I hope to, to accomplish, what could better myself, how, I stand, I, how I'm hopeful when I, when I meet him, that I don't disappoint him, that he forgives me for the mistakes that I made, all of those are my conversations to him. And then when he speaks to me, when he give, speaks to me, it's not just, he's, by the way, he's not just telling you what to do when he speaks to you. When he speaks to you, he's giving you hope. He's making you grateful. He's making you conscious and aware. He's making you, you know, uh, aware of the people around you and how you treat them. He's opening your eyes to reality. This, this conversation will set you straight. You, there are some people, you know, when you have a problem, you just need to talk to somebody. These ayat are telling you, these 30 days are days to talk to Allah. This is the conversation we have to have with Allah. If you can accomplish that. Some of you are working at night time. You can't make it to taraweeh prayer. Some of you are, you know, you're going to have a hard time coming into the masjid. You can't listen to lectures or gurus or whatever. Some of you have exams or, you know, you're taking extra courses in the summer. You have a busy Ramadan. It's not going to be an easy time for some of you. It's going to be very, very busy. Those of you that can make the time for extra ibadah, wonderful. Those of you who can't, understand this fundamental and your Ramadan will be beautiful. It's not just about fasting. It's about reconnecting and re-engaging Allah Azza wa Jal in conversation in this prescribed, in this guided way. May Allah Azza wa Jal make all of us those who directly speak with Allah and Allah Azza wa Jal speaks to our hearts through His book. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayat wa dhikr al-Hakim.